Welcome back to Outriders. In this video, we are going through the dev news for August 19th. I know you guys are seeing this later, but I've got a lot of personal stuff going on at the moment. So what we're going to do is go through the general news, and then we'll go through the latest patch news. However, for the ongoing list of currently tracked issues, I'm actually getting sick and tired of reading the same thing over and over again. So, as always, this will be linked in the description. You guys can come and take a look whenever you want to. And you can go through that list of currently tracked issues. But for the last, I don't know, I'm going to say a month or so, this is exactly the same thing. Things like progression blockers and there's mods and resources lost. The problem signing in on Xbox, Stadia, all that sort of stuff. But starting this one off with the general news. There's been a lot of discussion about Outriders this week. And we're sure that everyone has many thoughts and questions about their understanding of the situation. And what it means for Outriders and its future. However, there is really only one thing to say. Our plans for the future of Outriders remain unaffected. Nothing has changed. Well, it has changed. Updates got delayed, which is going to push other things back. So there has been change. However, what they see for the future of the game in terms of their vision for content and all that sort of stuff hasn't changed. The schedule and when everything is going to be released definitely will have changed. So it says, we, together with People Can Fly, are continuing to work closely together on improving and expanding the core Outriders experience on all platforms and remain very excited for the future of the game. Well, they say they are, like, improving and expanding the Outriders experience on all platforms. Well, you're not because you're still currently tracking issues with the state of Stadia. They carry on to say it is worth mentioning that as our patches to date have and are continuing to address most of the bugs that players have experienced or may have experienced, our teams are beginning to shift more focus towards working on and implementing much requested new features and content. We will talk more about this new horizon as well as the other Outriders related things we've been working on in the near future, so probably within the next month or two. So the patch news for the 19th. Our latest patch is currently undergoing the usual test cycle, but they wanted to share some highlights of the upcoming fixes and changes with you today. And it says here, before we go into the bullet points, please do bear in mind that our current testing is still validating the below fixes, so some of them may not be 100% guaranteed for this patch. Also note that this is not an exhaustive list and is still subject to change as we pass through the testing phase. The final patch will include more fixes and improvements. So they are further improving the visibility of the Broodmother's Surge AoE skill limit. They are fixing a bug that was preventing players from reviving themselves and other players after using the Trickster's Borrowed Time skill. They have resolved an issue that could cause the game to stutter when engaging crawlers in battle during expeditions. There is another issue that could cause players to stutter when entering the drained lake during the third enemy encounter in the Scorched Lands expedition. So that's the pit right at the end of it. They have finally resolved an issue that prevented secondary characters from picking up journal entries if they had already been collected on a different character. So that's taken um, the game come out April 1st. I'm recording this 21st of August. So that's already nearly five months later. And this patch still isn't available. So I'm going to say if it's available in two weeks, that's five months to fix that issue. However, they've also resolved an issue that had forced matchmaking privacy setting the default to open. It should now remain closed when set, and it should help further reduce AFK matchmaking. Probably won't. They've added an AFK status for players on friends lists, which is, um, yeah, let's move on. They have changed the behavior of the Devastator's Impale, so the game will now detect Impaled enemies as dead even before they disappear. As well as the Impale, the Dev's Reflect Bullet skill will now protect from Scyathan and projectile attacks. They fixed a bug that could prevent Devs from being able to consistently dodge if they had the Auto Reflect mod active. And when I say Devs, I mean Devastators. Fixed a bug that could cause client shots to sometimes deal no actual damage to enemies. So, yeah, if you've been playing multiplayer since April 1st, there has been a big chance if you are not hosting that match that you um, not you haven't actually dealt any damage at all to the enemies. And they've only just announced this one. I don't think I've seen it anywhere on like a patch notes list before, not even in an ongoing list of currently tracked issues. So I think it's something that possibly could have made the gameplay experience really bad, but they've hidden it for this long and kind of just chucked it in as if to say, oh yeah, we're uh, working on this. 
although I don't think any attention has been paid to it before now. So they've also fixed a bug that had caused the Technomancer's Plague Server set bonus to not proc consistently, and another issue or bug that would cause the Plague Sower and the Cannonball legendary sets to not retain their set bonus after a transition. I mean, Cannonball. Yeah, fixed a bug that could cause certain mods like Grand Opening to not proc if the player was on their last mag. Crash fixes and other minor bug fixes. That is their entire list. And, I mean, some of them do seem good. But, as always, if we uh, quickly go over to the Steam charts and we have a look at Outriders... Would you take a look at that? Currently, as I'm recording this, 1,100 people playing and a 24-hour peak of 1,569. So not even 1,600 players. And that was on a Friday at 9 p.m. my time. So peak time on a Friday. I mean, it might hit 1,600 on the Saturday, which would be the 21st. However, yeah, through the week, they've not actually... The last time they hit 50, over 1,500 players in a 24-hour window was Tuesday the 17th. So it really, really doesn't look good for Outriders because they did a load of skill changes with cooldown reductions and stuff, and they still can't bring players in. People aren't bothered about this game like nowhere near as much as they was before or as much as they were like a couple of months ago or something. People just... There's just been so much wrong with this game and the fact that they broke it themselves and took weeks to fix it. I think it was actually an entire month to sort out a crashing issue to release a patch. They had worked on the patch, it was ready, but the crash held it back for like an entire month. And whether or not it's going to take them an actual month to fix that sort of thing, they never should have broke it in the first place. So yeah, that was the August 19th dev news and the fact that they have said that they are continuing to work closely together on improving and expanding the Outriders experience. They remain very excited for the future of the game, and they are now shifting more focus towards working on and implementing much-requested new features and content. So, a lock feature, a store, like, rotation for Tiago, maybe more expeditions, like we could see some actual DLC coming out within the next few months or so. However, they have said that they will discuss this sort of stuff in the near future, so it could possibly be they're going to talk about it in a month or two, and then maybe early next year they might actually release something. I, I, I don't know their actual schedule or anything like that, but that's just an estimate. They'll probably announce something in the next month or two, and then it'll take a good few months after that for it to be released. Which is the fair enough. If it's DLC and expansion, whatever it might be, if it's new content, it will probably take a long time to get finalised and put into the game. I mean, especially knowing their history, their track record of what they do with patches and everything. With brand new content, it could be abysmal. It really, really could go badly wrong. However, we don't know. But what we're going to do is leave the video there. Remember, if you want to check this out for the ongoing issues and stuff, it's linked down below. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments, and I will see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it.